The following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. And I was like, yes, hi. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> oh, we high. We high again. <laughs> okay, hi. A guy gets to a point and he asks you to marry him, he really wants to marry you. Mm-hmm. He like, like, he really feels like, you know what, she, she's the one. She's the one. You already getting the goods. You got the, you got to pay for it. Bring me the ring and get on one knee. Okay. Or two. You need time to observe someone and really get a sense of how well do they treat you? How well do they handle adversity? You're not, you're not the one because you don't have, you don't have the grit, the perseverance, the, you ain't really want me because you really, you, you ready to give up? Because mm-hmm. I said, no? Nah, you shouldn't have asked. But since I said no, now it's your no job to stay in the game and try to fight for it. Boy on uh, five RB, so you make the announcement we're going solo at the award ceremony. <laughs> Happy, thank God. We only got two more days to the weekend day. Um, I'm excited for some reason. I, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and start. That's my that's my word of the day. I'm excited. I've been excited today. Like, I'm not real sure. And I was in a session earlier and we did a one word. And my word at that time was energized. But it's all kind of like, I don't know. And it feel is nice to feel good. Just for the sake of feeling good. So that's where I am today. I'm excited to be here. I missed you guys. We were under the weather, a couple of us last week. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, but I, I miss being here. I miss talking to y'all. I miss spending time with this crew. And so I'm just excited. And I will leave it at that. Um, and I'll let you guys start to share about uh, how you feel and what your word for the day is. So, you know, let's swing it to Ladine. We haven't started with you for a minute, Ladine. Mm-hmm, because I'm the bomb. I'm so sad. <laughs> <laughs> it is not my word. I'm excited, but no, no, let's see. I'm just kidding. I, um, I'm very you hope you speak enough for the both of us. Yeah, there you go. So I am I am excited, um, but I am incredibly, um, I'm so hopeful. So I started this lovely journey of mine um, at the beginning of Lent, and ah uh, man, I had a great, I had like an awesome weekend. I met up with some girlfriends um, back from back home <laughs> that let's say we weren't even really like close when we were. Um, younger, or when we lit all lived in New York, but we all knew of each other. But man, I was able to go out. We went to the Cheesecake Factory in Greensboro. We all lived. One actually lived 15 minutes from me. I couldn't believe it. Two of them live in Greensboro, which is pretty close. So, I mean, no, actually, one lived in Greensboro. The other one lived in Florence, South Carolina. Drove all the way up to Florence just to have dinner with us and enjoy some, you know, time, just some fellowship. It was beautiful. So, um, that, that was just, I had it last that long, y'all, and uh, y'all, yeah, I like to laugh, all right? I like to laugh, I like to be around good people, I love fun <laughs> times, and it was just so much fun, it was great, but the reason why I'm hopeful is because I was actually able to go out and have, I had some cauliflower tacos, and I was able to have these, them avocado egg rolls that they have, and it was, like, delicious, like, I'm just finding so many more dishes, that I, I like, that I can eat. Um, I don't feel so restricted around food anymore like I did for a while. Um, I look forward to eating. Um, 
but it's not like I don't I wow I didn't even realize this now I'm thinking about it I really don't feel very um heavy I was they feel like I, I was feeling so heavy I mean um of course I'm definitely not not down to what I want to be I actually haven't weighed myself um but I did weigh my son and I we both weighed ourselves last week I released 15 pounds he released 16 pounds we were like what <laughs> So it's exciting, <laughs> you know. Um, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's exciting. But yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm, and I'm grateful for, for all of this, for the journey, for what's to come, just for everything. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty dope for me. That's pretty oh. dope. Kudos. Hi. Yes, yes. Good job. And which son? Ladanian. He got his braces on. And he's actually really been following the rules. And he's mad funny. He was like, Mommy, the glow up is real. And <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, so he got his braces. So he's really following, like, the guidelines of what not to eat, what to eat. He's taking care of his mouth, but also taking care of his weight. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just really proud of him. Way That's to good. go, Oh, very good. Yes, big ups to the both of y'all. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, yes. Um, and so, Lady, when you were talking, I was thinking, like, there is, like, so many options of things to eat. So much different than it used to be, right? Like, everything that was healthy, like, you really was just like, but there are really, really good stuff out there to eat that's good for you. My problem, though, is I don't want to learn how to cook those things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know like that that style of eating like it really is it's, it's a whole it's very different and so it's like okay like I cook I know how to cook what I cook but that like and I'm like I'm not interested in relearning how to cook stuff all over again I'm just not and it's unfortunate because I need to get there right like in order to sustain this it's not like and plus it's just not healthy to eat out every night even if it is healthy stuff but Lord have mercy. I'm just like, uh. Can I, I collect I, all these recipes? I'm just like, yeah. I don't yeah, I I really feel you on that on that there. I do. Mm-hmm. That that is a difficult part, learning how to do all this stuff. But I, and man, and listen, avocados become my best friend. I'm like, yes, let me get some more avocado. Let me get some chunky guacamole. Come on, get over here and eat all of that. <laughs> I tried for years. And they are a great source of potassium. Mm-hmm. They have 60% more potassium than bananas. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. <clears throat> and so... Close enough. <laughs> but yes, yes. All right, JR, what you got for us tonight? Um... First of all, I want to congratulate you, Jenna. Um, great job um, for, for being... Uh, for your stick to itiveness, um, one word I learned a long time ago. I know that shit ain't real, but um, <laughs> you're that. proud of you. It works. Um, same for my wife. Uh, I see it on a day to day in and day out basis. So proud of both of you. Um, and uh, I agree with you that uh, you know it's uh, it's good to be back. I missed y'all. Um, so it's good to be back and, and, and doing this. But um, my word for today is um, I feel aligned. Um, for, you know how sometimes you feel like something's just off, but at times you feel like it's, everything is, comes easy. Um, and so for the last few weeks, things have been coming, well, for the last month or so, things have been coming easy to me and, um, my mind has been open. Um, and I'm, you know, picking things up quicker, um, you know, then, you know, sometimes when you, when you get older, sometimes you do have those moments when you're like, man, I seem a little foggy. Um, but I've been clear. Um, I've been totally aligned. Um, I shared with Lay a couple of weeks ago and I got to share with Le- with Al last night that, um, my dad came to see me in a dream a couple of weeks ago mm. and, um, it was so clear. Um, and he even, I mean, I was, I was so excited to talk to Al about it because he actually mentioned Al's dad when I was talking to him. Um, and so it was, it was so cool, but everything was just so clear. And you know how, when you, 
a lot of times when you dream, you don't remember what you dream until a couple of days later or maybe the middle of the next day. I was able to immediately like wake up and remember, oh, I was just there. It was, it was so clear. Um, and I woke up like gasping for air like I was in another realm or something. So it was um, things have just been like that lately. Um, I just feel aligned with a lot of things. Um, with most things and, um, you know, it, it's, it's like you're almost in a groove. So, um, I'll take it as long as I'm here. I don't know. I can't put my finger on what it is. Um, but I feel extremely aligned lately. Nice. That's a great place to be. Yeah. yeah and, and doesn't necessarily need an explanation. Right. I'm, I'm, you know, um, and that's one thing that I try to remind myself of is, it's not, maybe it's not for me to know why, um, you know, just and maybe it's, you know, it, maybe it's OK with just accepting it as your normal for now. And that's cool. Um, you know, and even and I'm, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to. So my 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 wife, when she was out with her friends, um, the friend that she rode with, the car broke down while they were down there. And they were about 30 minutes away. So, of course, you know, um, when she called. She was expecting me to go full out bonkers, like straight up glimp style, like, fuck is wrong with y'all? I don't know. She was expecting it. I know she was. I could hear it in her voice. Um, <laughs> but I rolled with it and I rolled with the punches because I did, I don't know, something, I don't know, didn't bother me. Um, I called Pooh to let him know. I called Pooh and I was like, yo, man, I'm about to go down here and pick up Lay. You know, she down here with her homegirls and the car done broke down. And Pooh like, man, you got to be kidding me. Um, I was like, yeah, just want to let you know. So a um, couple hey, days later. What's happening? Why are you pulling Pooh? Telling Pooh you're going to pick me up because my friends are I mean, because. What is happening right now? But all right, go ahead. That's the story because I don't understand. I don't understand, but go ahead. Look, I'm caught. Like, I can't call my best friend and be like, yo, I'm about to head down and pick up my wife. I'm, I'm about to travel a damn near hour to pick you up, like, uh, right, like, damn, like, uh, you can call your sisters for every little thing, I can't call my brother, <laughs> right, damn, <laughs> again, I'm feeling aligned, because I'm cool with calling my brother, and say, look, man, I just want to let you know where I'm going, that's cool with me, so, y'all judge how you want to, um, but what I'm saying is, a couple of days later, I'm like, yo, did old girl figure out what's... Because I've never met these. Because, like they said, it's, she, it's the first time hanging out with them since they've been there. So I don't know them. And I was like, so, well, uh, did she figure out what happened to her car? And when my wife told me that, yo, um, you're going to laugh. I was like, uh-oh. She's like, yeah, we ran out of gas. I was like, are you kidding me? Wow. Yes. Um, but I laughed, and I normally I would have felt some tinge of... Oh, you about to hear my mouth. But um, I did. It was, uh, I laughed. Um, and I was able to laugh it off. So things like that. Things just not been bothering me lately. So, um, except for my kids. I can't get over that one. But, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm just in that spot right now. Man, listen. You know what? Even through all of that, it was still mad fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she did have, um, so she did have the car towed. We really didn't know, like, what happened or what was wrong. I didn't even, I mean, I was in her car. Her car looked like it was decent enough to drive 30 minutes. I didn't think it was a problem. So, um, but she wanted to drive. I offered to drive. But anyway, yeah, car broke down, and then she let me know. She said I ran out of gas. I said, oh, no, I, I don't know about this. You're not allowed to drive no more. I don't think people do that in their forties and stuff. You know, you might have did that as a kid, but I don't know. Whatever. What What are you gonna do? Uh, I don't know. All right, Kita. How you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing. I'm doing better than last. What was that? Last Wednesday? Well, no, last that wasn't Wednesday. Wednesday. That was Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That um. I thought I was going to do good, pretty good with the vaccine, but I guess it uh, took me out after a couple of hours. <laughs> that was, was which one did you get? Like crazy. But, um, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I forgot we had told him that. 
And it's, really and it's rewarding. So this is a good thing. Yes. Yes. Topic. That's a topic. Yeah. All right. No, no, no. I'm just saying that's a good. Uh, that's a good idea for a topic. I'm sorry. I need that one. Go ahead, bud. Who traveled? Get a get a better base baseball player than you already after two games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, three more games will catch up to me. So yeah, go ahead, bud. <laughs> Doing, and I said, "Yeah, all right, because that was our um, one of our um, segments last night. So, I mean, last night. So I came with a yeah, and she was like, yeah, and why? I was like, well, you know, Wednesday is, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's like, you know what? You need to get it together. 
and then played in the R.E. song, Get It Together, right? So I'm sitting there vibing and liking the song. So anyway, definitely changed my mood throughout the day. So as I'm going out to get some dinner this evening, and I was thinking of what's going to be my word, you know, um, uh, India Ari quote came into my spirit. And it was, Mm -hmm. um, the past does not dictate who I am. So my word was going to be choose because that's the name of the song that that lyric comes from. But my word of the day is actually space because the more I thought about that quote and now I'm walking into the restaurant, I'm thinking, you know, that's like, that's that's a dope quote because it really doesn't dictate who we are and it's really just the past. And so we got to choose to be different. And that's kind of freeing when you have that mentality. Like, if you can free yourself of that, if you can free others of that, like, that's some real, like, relieving, releasing shit. So I thought, well, maybe my word to be release. And remember, my word is space. But I said, well, maybe my word to be release. <laughs> because I could actually make this point. So, okay, so now I'm in the restaurant. And I'm standing there. And just coincidentally, I'm going on a sh- crazy tangent, but coincidentally, as I stand online six feet away from the person in front of me, I actually stopped six feet without having to actually look at the little X on the ground. Like, that just shows you how trained we are to be socially distant. Because mm. I walked up and I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. And then I looked down and I was like, wow, you actually on the damn side. <laughs> <laughs> <Some shit. laughs> but anyway, so I'm sitting there. And I'm like, well, maybe that's because you come here so goddamn much. I'm like, but you know, you go here a lot because you like supporting black and brown restaurants and businesses, and that's what this place is. And the food is okay, and it ain't even the most the healthiest spot in the world. But still, I do like supporting black and brown businesses. So I'm coming to why this is called space, my word for the day. So as I get up to the cashier, <laughs> and I'm paying for my food, so, um, the cashier is like, uh, what's your name? And I was like, Al. And she was like, you know what? I should know who you are by now. And I was like, real talk, because I do come in here like twice, like every other week. So by now, you really should recognize. And we the family to get the special order with the, the mixed uh, hot honey and the lemon pepper. So, like, real talk, you should know who I am. And I'm joking with her. But I could tell she's, like, feeling like, like, ooh, damn. Like, this guy really, like, maybe he feels bad that I don't recognize who he is. So she's now starting to apologize. And I'm like, nah, not real talk. So really, you ain't got to remember who I am. I'm just glad that you remembered that you should be remembering who I am. Like, that's progress in itself. I'm not expecting, you know how many people you see? You shouldn't, I'm not holding you for that. And she's like, oh, well, maybe the next time, Al. I said, oh, the time after that, or oh, the time after that, because we believe I'm coming back. So whenever you remember me, you remember me. Or if not, it don't matter because I'm still coming back. And we just had a moment there where, like, she smiled and was like, yo, that's some real cool shit. And as I'm walking out, I'm like, yo, that was, like, a real cool moment, like, to have with a, with a <laughs> person in my community. And I really believe it only happened because as I walked in here, I really relieve myself of this myth that something I've done in the past has anything to do with what I have in the future, and I felt lighter. So my whole point is that we should give each other, give ourselves space and push some of this baggage shit out of our lives because it allows space for good shit to come in your life. And I think, like, that's just a cool story that I wanted to share with y'all. Reach. Good stuff, man. He dropped Mike. Right. Y'all, y'all ain't know my husband was a storyteller, did you? <laughs> Biggie. Because he definitely is a storyteller. Mm-hmm. But it also it's makes like me smile. Because I, I was thinking about, <laughs> again, like it just reminded me of last week in the holding a session, right? It was supposed to be an icebreaker. Like, so it was literally like five minutes for this particular segment. 
<laughs> in the session, and it turned into a 20-minute conversation, right? So I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, so we ain't going to have time to do everything. <laughs> because I'm listening to Al, I'm like, all right, this is the word of the day. It's supposed to be, you know, <laughs> 45 seconds. We didn't turn into a five-minute story. But it's good, right? It's good because it was a cool story, mm-hmm. right? Number one. Number two, he dropped some knowledge. But number three, this is our motherfucking show. Our and motherfucking it can be as long or as short as we want it to be. So, ah! there you have it. Right. And, number, and number four, this is our motherfucking show. That's all you guys for. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got to own that. I'm gonna leave that right there. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, y'all, we are. Um, actually, I'm just gonna put this quote out there, right? <clears throat> Our topic tonight is. Um, really important and near and dear because we all are parents and have children and for some of us we're still figuring it out right our children Mm -hmm. are the oldest um so there are some things that i can't even say that we i mean yes of course of course there are came across a quote that said, and I'm paraphrasing, kicking your kids out at 18 is a generational curse. Without a plan. So, yeah, that was the key part. Cause, and it was me. I saw it was, yeah, kicking your kids out at 18 without a plan is a generational curse. So, without a plan yes. is a generational yes. curse. Um, yeah, that makes it more specific. Mm-hmm either way yeah um so it got me to thinking um about a lot of things um but one of the things that i I started thinking about like what were we teaching our children Like, what did I do? What did I do intentionally or maybe not intentionally? Um, And I I think that while I didn't necessarily intend on kicking my children out at 18, there was kind of this underlying, you know, that's around the age when you start making decisions, right, that will lead you to leaving my house. You know, with that being one of the main end goals that I wanted for my children, that when they became a certain age, and and I think in my mind it was when they graduated from college at the time. Um, So how do I prepare them for that stage or that moment in their lives? And for me, I know that one of the things that I did, and so I would... I did a lot of coaching of teachers um, some years ago in a, the same teachers in a setting, right? And one of the things when we would do professional development, one of the things that we always started every year with, right, was what do you want to get or to see from your children at the end of this school year? Who do you want them to be? What skills do you want them to have? How do you want them to behave? Like all of those kinds of questions looking at the end of the year, right? And then backtracking, what are the things that you need to do to make sure that that happens? 
here is what you want at the end of the year. And so what are your action steps from now until then? And so mm. while I didn't necessarily believe in in that they had to leave my house at 18, I do think that um, I raised them in a way that forced them to grow up uh, quicker than they needed to. Um, and so now I sit here today and I'm reading this statement and I'm like, I wholeheartedly I believe that children should not be kicked out and had I had that that way of thinking 10, 15, 20 years ago, I would have raised my children very differently. So I say all that to say <laughs> that so many times the things that we believe and or don't believe, whether we do it intentionally or not, like we put all of that energy into, it's going to manifest itself in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. So you all know our children are 21 and 23 now. Dang, I was Jeez. In, less in two months. Right, so they're 21 and 23. Oldest is graduated from college. Um, he is living at home. He was not living at home. Uh, he moved back home probably a little over a year now, I think. Don't even remember. The youngest one is scheduled to graduate in May, um, and she, at least not before July, she won't be coming home, coming back home, but it's also not her intention. <clears throat> All right, so now that you know that little back story about me and, and, and where that particular quote took me, how, where do y'all land? Let's start with um, Kita and Thomas. So the quote is, kicking your kids out at 18 without a plan is a generational curse. Do you Do agree? You agree? And has anything, anything changed for you? Your oldest, your oldest is what, 13? Yes, yeah, so my our oldest is 13. He'll be 14 this year, though, in August. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so... um. I definitely, um, I definitely agree with that, but you kind of like listening to your story. It kind of like had me thinking like a certain way because that's exactly how I think. Like now, now that I have smaller kids, is that I think about not say I think about death. It just gives me anxiety because I had an aunt that passed away at a young age, like in. She was maybe like, I thought the whole to was like 42. You were just talking about, yeah, it was like she was 42 and her youngest was 12. Um, and so that always kind of hit home for me. I'm like, that's all that's that's the only thing I like pray about every day is like, let me have my kids prepared before I leave this world, you know what I'm saying, or let me just be here <laughs> you know just to see them at different walks of life with college marriage all the uh, above because i just know what it does to a child you know when they lose a parent but um i definitely will say prepare because i'm like a preparing type planning type person and i do believe
talked about it before um, because my my sister had actually brought it to my attention. Um, my sister and her husband, <laughs> they got into this massive argument about this. And um, so my sister, she, she had her first son at 15, and Sam was 17. So they've been doing this for a really long time. <laughs> so now, let me see. If I'm if I'm 39, she, uh, my sister's 41. Uh, I think I, I think her husband is gonna be is, is 43, about to be 44. Anyway, so my nephew, he's gonna be 25 this year, right? 25 or is he gonna be 26? 26. He was born in 95. Yes, yeah, so I think he's gonna be 26. Um, but he's still home, and he's the oldest. And then they have a 23 year old, and then they have uh, another one that's graduating high school. So, the oldest, he, um, he went to college. He did his four years. He graduated with his bachelor's in business management. Um, he's always been very responsible. Um, he, he, he got a job. He makes great money. He makes better money than me. Um, he, he, he. He makes great money. He was able to get a car a couple years ago. He's paid his car off. He has savings up the wazoo. My brother-in-law is like, yo, what is really good? When the hell they getting out of here? Like, I'm tired of this already. And I mean, I could only imagine he literally, you know, started his life early taking care mm -hmm. of his family. And, and he's been the breadwinner. And my brother-in-law has done his thing for him and for, 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 for his family and for my sister. So... Um, he's he's tired. He's like, yo, they need to be men. They need to struggle. They need to understand what it's like. And my sister had to stop him one day, and she was like, well, why do they have to struggle? Like, why is this embedded in our families? Why is this embedded in our in our lifestyles that they have to know what a struggle is in order to in order to um, in order to have any type of success? Why can't they be given it gracefully? Why can't we allow them to take their time to grow, save their money so that when they leave here, they got a house. So that when they leave here, they're going to be men. They're all men, all boys. You know, they're, they are going to be men of their family. Why not we give them the opportunity to, to start their families off? and be able to buy their own homes and just start their families off a little bit better because other people, rich people, or just people with a little bit more money than your average, they think of things like this. They do things like this. But we come from a different culture where it's... And these kids, they go out there into this world they don't know how to pay bills. They mess up their credit. They don't know. And then parents are constantly getting upset because the kids is coming back home. Well, what did you teach him? How did you start him off? How did you help him? So I think that's dope with the planning. That's a lot of the planning. You know, that's a lot of the, the, the meat and the juice that comes into the planning. Like, you know, teach them how to have a credit card. Teach them just but show them the way that, that we didn't know. But because we're programmed to believe that everything's got to be a struggle, we got to work hard for everything. We got to, why do we have to work hard? Why can't I work? Why can't I work with um, ambition and, 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 and grace and it just come out great, right? Why do I always got to work hard at things? So it's just that programming that I think we have as minorities that everything's got to be difficult in order for us to be okay in order for us to get right but anyway um i so i so for me um i'm grateful that they had this situation i really try to look at the other people in my life and what they go through and you know if it's something that's meaningful if it's something that that that's impactful I look to be incredibly mindful of it. And so I so when 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 I came to JR with this, he was like, "Yo." So babe, go ahead. I'll let you. Um <laughs> Yeah, um you know, it's it's one of those things that I never knew how I felt about it until, you know, I had kids. Um so I never 
It never, because it's always, like they said, it's always been ingrained in me that you leave my house at 18, you're going to be here, you better be in school, have a job, or go into the military. Um, that's all I've heard, or you're going to be out of my house. <clears throat> that's just how my father said it. I heard my uncle say it a bunch. Um, her neighbors say it a bunch. It's just how we're raised. Um, <clears throat> and I have, you know, I always say I have blueprint couples um, in my life. Al and Gina, Tanya and Wayne, Sam and Shav. People that have been doing this a lot longer than I have. Um, and I'm afforded the, the luxury to pick and choose things that they do that I'm like, oh, that's pretty dope. Let me try this out. Um, and because I've seen them or I've spoken to you guys about things, I'm able to, uh, now, now I know I better have a fucking slop sink in my house um, when, <laughs> when I get out. Um, I better have an, a separate entrance to my garage. Those things that I know because I'm afforded that luxury of, you know, the, the people that have the, uh, you know, the benefit of results. Um, so thank you guys. But th this is one of those things that I, that, you know, that I was able to kind of, kind of pick from, um, from Sam and Shav and from Tanya and Wayne, um, and Lay's spot on. They're like we have this, this, this misconception in, in our communities. And I say our, I mean, black and brown communities that, you know, in order for me to be successful, I have to struggle. If my business, if my, if I, if I sleep, my business ain't going to be successful. We see it all over Facebook and social media team. No sleep. Oh, you can okay? I sleep when I die. Like, no, you don't have like, nigga, you better get some sleep. You are the most successful people in this world. Get their rest. You know, your body will tell you when you need your, like, don't do that. Um, you know, but we have this, you don't see Bill Gates and, and, you know, any of these people all over, like Oprah, any of these people saying, ah, man, I, I never sleep. Like, no, they tell you, get your rest. Um, and they also tell you to have a plan. Uh, so if you break this quote down, um, and that's why, um, Gene, I absolutely agree that, you know, it, it does work without the, you know, the part about a plan. Um, but if your child does have a plan, I, I wanted to make sure that was included because if your child does have a plan and you work together to have a plan when they're 18, yeah, it's totally fine. Let them fly, um, you know, and, 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 and push them out. Um, if you feel they're ready and they feel they're ready. Um, but if, you know, I, I communicate this to my kids um, because I want to make sure that, I'm not just waiting till they're 18 and being like, Oh, you ain't got a plan. Well, you better, uh, I don't know. Um, or waiting till they're 18 and be like, well, you ain't got a plan. Let's start to No, I'll start talking about this them way before they're 18. Um, so, you know, preparing them, um, with a knowledge base and tangibly. Uh, so adding, you know, adding my teenager, as a second user on my credit card. So he doesn't have to do anything. When he leaves my house, he'll have an 800 credit score. Um, you know, those little things that set them up for success than when they, to, to, it's easier to develop a plan. Um, so, you know, making sure that when you leave my house, you, you're not renting, you're buying a house when you leave my house. Um, if that's your plan, if that's what you want, but I don't want you renting until you're 30 and, you know, um, and, 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 and 35 or 40 and you're struggling, um, trying to learn on the fly when you can be here and learn and still build, um, you know, in, 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 in the home that you grew up in. Um, I absolutely agree that if you do decide to go to school, I would like you to live in a dorm so you can get that, that feeling of, you know, of being, um, some kind of responsibility, but still having the security of, of, of mom and dad. Um, but there are those things about teaching your kids to set them up with a plan, even when they don't know you're planning for them. Uh, so I tell my kids all the time that, you know, like, you know, I can set you up with a, with a Roth IRA when you're 14 and when you turn 60, you'll have a million dollars in the bank. So you don't have to worry about a retirement plan or going to work for somebody for all your life and worried about a 401k and if social security is going to be available when you're, when you're, when you're eligible, you can actually live your life and let your money work for you. Um, and one of the dopest quotes I've ever seen was, um, one thing I've 
and I wish I was taught was to treat every dollar I have like an employee. Um, so I can make sure that every dollar I have is working for me. Um, and if I had learned at an earlier age, which I wasn't afforded that opportunity to have these conversations or knowledge transfers with my father, because he wasn't taught that and he didn't have that to teach me. Um, and so to be able to provide my kids uh, with a base that when they leave and have a plan, a plan of action that when they leave, you know, you ain't got to worry about uh, now I got to fix my credit score. Oh, man, I want to fuck this up or go to school and start, you know, buying stuff on credit. And then you worry about it later and just stuff like that, dude, that I know I did. I know a lot of my friends did, um, you know, if, you know, as, as dope as it was, you know, living with my best friends when I was younger. If you don't want to have a roommate, you could be set up to have your own place when you leave my house. So just things like that, that um, I think is dope to be able to provide our kids with everything that we didn't have, because that's the purpose of, of parenthood is to provide them with things that we didn't have and to grow that a lot of other communities um, afford their kids and to be able to build generational wealth. Yeah. And I think that it's important that getting the, all the clothes in the world, because I, show my kid got this and that okay well what you know those certain values instilling those certain values in them and instilling greatness in them and being able to do that and learn from other people that may not have done that or sorry and being able to learn from people that that have and that may not have it's just it's great yeah. <laughs> it's really great like i'm i'm so grateful to be able to have these conversations with other adults with other parents and just to be able to go back and forth and have those different ideas because that generational wealth is so incredibly important to get them to understand to pass on All right. to their family Agreed Al Hey so
so I guess my, my generation of curse was education. That's that's what I'm passing on to my folk, right? So I, it ain't no generational curse to kick them out because what I pledged to do was prepare you to when you get 18, you'll be ready to take care of your damn self. So it ain't no generational curse because I ain't going to kick you out without a plan. You're going to have a plan. I might kick you out. That's not the generational curse part. The generational curse for me part is to kick you out without a plan. Right. That's why I want to make sure that part was included. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like having a baby or getting a divorce. The generational curse of a divorce is not because you got divorced. A generational curse on a divorce would be if your mama got divorced and her mama's mama got divorced. That's when it's a generational curse. But the fact that you just happen to get a divorce, no, I ain't no generational curse of that. So again, me kicking my kids out. That ain't no generational curse. Me kicking away out a plan, that would probably be, that would probably happen with somebody whose mama kicked them out without a plan because they didn't, their mama didn't teach them that, yo, really? You need a plan. Or their daddy didn't teach them, really? You need a plan. So they might have repeated the generational curse or broke the curse, either way. But my point is, I still believe in it. And I agree with the quote that tip probably somebody who kicked somebody out without a plan it probably is a representation of a generation Because at 18, and I'm just saying typically, at 18, you're probably not going to have a job that's going to earn you enough of a living to have a spot, to have it, to, to be able to take care of yourself, basically. And so, you know, like to me, the pl like I, I, it, it's hard for me to fathom a plan for an 18-year-old that really is going to allow them to sustain themselves unless they're living with someone else. Mm -hmm. That's where choices come in. And hopefully as um, you're being reared with my children, hopefully. year old out in the streets that's probably not the best idea and I'm glad they chose the choice they did but if they chose another choice again they're grown I mean not grown but I'm less interested in feeling bad about the choices of my children that's not the type of parent I've worked to be if anything I've been really going through work over the years of I don't want to be that parent I want to be that parent of Listen, if I, I'm, I'm going to give you some advice, but at the end of the day, son, daughter, it's your life. Yeah, and 
I, I feel what you're saying, I'm, and which is why I, can, I can't I can't tell anyone they're wrong in their approach to this. Um, I'm just on a completely different side because I want to be emotionally attached to my kids and my sons when they're grown. Um, I want them to call me for little shit like, "Yo, pop, I'm trying to make a decision." Um, I know this may seem small to you, but I need you. Um, and I want to be emotionally invested in their, you know, whatever choices they make and they allow me to be a part of. Because I don't think that some some miscellaneous number at 18 that we assign to adulthood means anything to me. Um, that shit is just random as fuck to me. Like, for people to just say, oh, you're 18, when actually science says that, you know, males' adult brains don't stop maturing until they're 25. So you just assign 18 and say, well, I'm going to stop taking care of you. You're like, nah, that's not how shit works. So I want to continue to grow uh, that relationship and and have them continue to to know that if they have to, they can lean on me. I don't want to, I don't, like, to me, what your statement does is provides a false sense of a choice, right? If you say that if you go to school, I'm going to support you, if not, you got six months. It's a choice, but it ain't really a choice. You get what I'm saying? So it provides like a I, false I, sense of a choice. We're like, well, damn, I, I know I'm a, I, like, I know this other option is a failure. I'm set. I'm being set up to fail. I don't really have another choice but to go to school. But I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a failure if you're living out on your own and struggling or you got a roommate or whatever that's not failure that's just like how your life how you're living your life and so i don't mm -hmm. i don't assign that fact that someone goes to school as success or someone who decides no. to work because i got i got a, a really good homeboy who's been working for ups about to retire and never went to school like this what he did and he struggled, and so it, I don't. I didn't look at his his choice as, oh man, you failed. I didn't. I didn't do that. I right, but but that was a different choice of how he wanted to live a life. Right, I, and I agree with that. But one, it, that, that that's flawed because if we're walking in reality, we understand that he's an outlier. Shit don't work like that for most people, who mm -hmm. um, who are kicked out at eighteen without a plan. Um, secondly, I get that. Um, and I'm not talking about the, the fact of success and failure in the, in the moment or, or, or like the result of your life is not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is in the moment, um, you what your lead, what you, you aspire to, if you're looking at those two options of, I got six months to be self-sustainable as an 18 year old or go to school. Oh, I'm gonna stretch this shit out. I'm going to school, whether I whether I'm ready for it or not. It's 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 it's, it's a choice, but it's kind of forced. Um, oh, go ahead. No, and 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 then lastly, I was just say this: like you said, forced or false? Both. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, yeah, go ahead, Lam. with them about being men and that they're going to be the breadwinners of their families they're, they, they're going to be the caretakers so having a decent job is going to absolutely matter and so to get a, so I asked him I said so what do you want to do and he's like oh I want to move to California I want to do this I want to do that and he's explaining to me you know what 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 his future looks like like what 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 Ladanian at his best and his greatest looks like and I was like oh I was like okay so now do you think that you're going to be able to do those things or get those things by let's say um working making 825 an hour or working making let's say ten dollars an hour and until you get there how are you going to get to LA how are you going to get into these jobs how are you he was like 
oh. And so, you know, just really sitting down and talking with him and explaining to him, mommy didn't go to college. Mommy doesn't get the same job offers that daddy gets. Mommy, when I, when, even through all the experience that I have, when I go into a, a when, when I go into somewhere with my resume, I'm only, I, I get capped out at a certain, at a certain rate at, or at a certain salary. Whereas your dad may make a little more, and that gives a little bit more leeway. It, 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 it allows us to breathe more. So do you want to breathe, or do you want to be capped out? No matter what, every career has a cap, yes. But do you want to cap yourself out so low when you would be able to provide and be able to do and just, just have a tad bit more freedom than you would if you didn't go to school? And so just showing them that, you know, that difference and those different sides, I think supports with the planning. I think having those conversations, all of that supports with the planning. So I told my, but uh, yeah, we, we have had those conversations with our kids though. And the kids have asked, you know, well, what if we didn't want to go to school? Okay, well then what do you want to do? What do you actually want to do if you don't want to go to college? And so the one thing that I just love again about the Glimp family is all these um, college tours and stuff and just that them having those examples in their family of people that they look at as great, that they look up to, just their cousins that are here, you know, my niece and nephew that are here, they love seeing them working, going to school, you know, they, they're like, yeah, like that's the life, you know what I mean? <laughs> I want them to see that. I want them to get a feel of that because I want them to want more for themselves because shit is real. I've worked two jobs for years, and right now I might not be working a second job. I do run a doTERRA business, but that's still something else. So I'm still doing more than one thing. I don't – not that I don't want them because I, I completely understand – the detachment. I understand what Al was saying. And you, there's only so much that you can hold on to when it comes to your children. I don't want to hold on. I know I can't hold on to their pain for them. I think different I, – I, I do think people experience that, though, at different points in life. Not everyone is always ready to, to let go. Not everyone is ready to release um, that hold, whether it's – an um, and I know that Jay was saying – at the emotional attachment. So I'm still very emotionally attached to my children, but there are things that have occurred in our life that has allowed me to detach from being able to hold on to their pain for them. And it's 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 allowed me to breathe as a parent a little differently and better. I'm still very emotionally attached to my children, but I know how to separate the two. So I, I, I get what Al was saying, but at the same time, I definitely want of course, I want them to want more for themselves, but the only way to do that is to start for me um, now. You know, start start having these conversations now. Start st start giving them all of the juice now. I don't. I and I don't think that it's ever too late because I'm I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly oh, yeah. looking to be fed. I'm 39 and I still want to be fed. Do you know what I mean? So it's like. I don't, I don't think that it's ever too late to feed your children these things, these values, and all of the goodness that can come with, with wanting more for themselves. It is definitely. I mean, nothing is ever too late until you're not here anymore. Mm. At that point, then it's mm -hmm. too late. But any time between now and then, it's never too late. Um, but I just want to say, too, to what you were saying, um, Ladine, and I guess indirectly, J.R., like, so how I understood Al and, and I believe that I know him well enough to know <clears throat> that it wasn't about, it was more about what you were saying, Ladine, and not so much what JR was saying, right? Because it's not that he's not emotionally attached to his children. What he said was, I cannot be emotionally attached to their choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are two very different things, mm -hmm. right? And so, like, for me, because of who I am, and I'm a mom and a woman and an empath and all that kind of stuff, like, it's hard for me, it's hard, yeah, it's hard for me to detach from even their choices. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because like yeah. you're saying, lady, I, I, I feel their pain. I don't want them to hurt and go. Like, I know that this choice that you're making, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to serve you well, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's that learning how to let go, which I'm definitely, I mean, because, okay, my kids are like, they grown for real. You know, and my son is 23. He's not really, like, we are so past the do what I say. Mm. <laughs> Even though I wish it was that. <laughs> um, but I do. I am. Um, I get very, it's hard for me to let that piece go. And even even in the, in the moment when I'm being intentional <clears throat> about not saying anything and letting them make those choices. And, you know, and I may or may not voice what I think. But afterwards, I'm like, oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, this is what's happening and blah, 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 blah. And, he's like, and thank God for him, right? Because he is that calm before the storm and sometimes after. Like, boo, stop. And sometimes he'll just be like, stop. You know, and then, you know, so it's really more of that. But I did want to talk about, I wanted to go back to what you were saying, Ladine, about, or maybe JR, about the whole working hard thing and how mm-hmm. we're taught, right? That mm-hmm. you have to work hard, that, that you have to struggle to get where you want to be and blah, blah, blah. And while I don't, I, I don't agree with, I think that there is value in working hard. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is what our elders and even ancestors you know, in some instances, was trying to teach us, right? And unfortunately, we we struggle with teaching that lesson outside of monetary compensation. So we all we mm-hmm. often attach, you know, work hard, work hard, so you can get more money. Work hard, work hard, so you can have a house. Work hard. You know, but there is value in working hard just for the sake of working hard. Uh, I like, agree. You, you work hard because that it, it builds character. You work hard mm-hmm. because that's where grit comes from. You work hard because you're not handed stuff. Like, there is value in knowing that you have to work in order to get things. And I don't mean money, necessarily, or even um, tangible things. Mm-hmm. But... You know, it's good for your soul. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so there are there there is value, and a lot of times people have a really hard time, and even rich people, or it doesn't matter, right? Like, you, we have a really hard time with teaching our children that lesson and giving them mm-hmm. stuff, or giving them, setting them up for life, right? Mm-hmm. So somebody mentioned. You know, Bill Gates doesn't do that. That was over the sleep, you know. And, but actually, mm, people typically who don't come from money, they work really hard. They lose a lot of sleep. You know, they exactly. give up. But they don't brag about it. That, oh, absolutely not. No, I'm just <laughs> right. saying that there still is value yeah. and disservice right. to our children when we say, mm. I'm going to set you up. You know, you've got this bank account. I'm going to start your retirement. And you really mm-hmm. don't have to worry about retirement anymore. You know, just live your life. Mm-hmm. And so I think that we, we end up setting our children up when we try to give them all that stuff that we didn't have. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times we haven't figured out how to do both and. How to teach them how to work hard for stuff and not kill yourself doing it. Right. And that's where the plan comes in. Right. So... But that's also the the idea of working hard is also a tad bit of another generational curse, which exactly yes, Stop. I agree with what you're saying. Though. How how do you find the value in the work without it having to be hard, right? Right. How do you find the value in the work without it having to be hard? Teaching the kids the lesson of the value of work. Why do we have to add the hard onto it? Why does it, why why do we have to work hard for everything? That because, I, I mean, it's, no, it's, 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 it's the idea. Hold on. It's so it's the idea. It's 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 the concept. 
it's it's the words it's what we're actually saying what we are teaching them in the, in, in in the idea that they have to work hard all of that those are curses that have been brought to us so if i'm not saying yes child here's a silver platter this is for you and you ain't had to do nothing for it no but the point is I'm agreeing with what you're saying as far as how, where do we find the value in the work and being able to teach them that lesson at the same time? And I mean, yeah, and I, 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 yes, I agree. And in, in the silver spoon in the mouth, you know, it might be to been, have been an extreme. But I think I like the word hard, and I don't view that as a curse. I think it's the attachment we give to it, though, um, yeah, that we, we tend to give hard. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead, Keita, because I was I was thinking about pulling y'all in because y'all been oh, yeah. no. and attitude. And stuff. Yeah. Go ahead, Keita. I was saying maybe you. I was about to say what Jay was saying. It's the attachment to it because our we looking at our work hard is like our grandparents when you have two and three jobs, mm-hmm. but you got to work hard regardless if you trying to you know, make money and be successful at it. Everything is working hard. So I don't look at working hard as, you know, like something negative. I'm, I, when I say work hard to my kids now, I mean, you got to put in the work, you got to hustle, you got to wake up, don't waste your time, just sleeping your, your day away and doing your job. You know what I'm saying? Like going, building your stocks, doing whatever you have to do that's all work hard. Right. I, I agree. And, yeah. and for me, like working hard is synonymous with doing your best. See, because if you're not working hard, like sometimes just working really isn't good enough. If you out here trying to just garden, right? And you working hard, but that dirt is harder, then you got to put in some more work. You got to work harder See, just but to accomplish your goal. That's the part I don't agree with, though. Mm-hmm. Because, like, to me, that, like, if, if, there's, if there's hard dirt and then there's soft dirt six inches away from you, and you know this, but you plowing away at this hard dirt, like, to me, working harder is not necessarily synonymous with doing your best because your best would be to move over six inches and work with the more suitable dirt. It depends. You might not be able to, there might be a reason you can't work with the suitable dirt. There's a pipe under the suitable dirt. Right. But that, but that's right. But all things being, you have an option of soft dirt and hard dirt and they're Mm -hmm. all equal and you pick the hard dirt. Then that's not like, that's just being silly. Right. But that's sort of, but all I'm saying, all things being equal without throwing pipes. And I'm talking about with the same land, all things being equal, if we rec- if we can stop, slow down, and realize that I have more suitable land here to work with, and it's the same, all things are equal, like, that's where I think, like, and when you, it's the attachment we give to hard, right? Uh, when we say hard work. we It's the biggest myth in our communities uh, that that hard work gets you more and whether you say monetary compensation recognition whatever that is more work harder work has never for in, in exchange for dollars has never worked and we know that all right I agree wholeheartedly. and i also just think that if you don't introduce that concept then children or people don't understand that sometimes, and I'm not saying every time, mm-hmm. absolutely there are times when you don't have to work hard. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't even understand the concept of working hard, or it hasn't been introduced, like, you're never going to work hard. Right, it's and so, work. right, so that's where I think the, that's where I think it comes in, the the actual plan comes in, right? And so, when, when you dig a little deeper, um, we keep talking about holes and shit, um, but when you dig a little deeper, <laughs> We um, this is when there's there's two things, and I think we kind of touched Gene. I think you kind of touched on it earlier. Um, one, it like and Keita touched on it. When you do that hard work is a big part of it too. Um, there's a, there's an author that I know, no man I met, his name is Jr. Too, uh, but he tells his kids that he was telling me this, and he was like, you either you either um, you gonna play now and pay later, or you gonna pay now and play later, right? 
Um, so I think it's a matter of when you do that hard work. When you're young and you can, you don't have any any ties, any attachments. You have the energy to work hard. Um, you can you can work twelve hour shifts and break your back and get up and be able to do it day after day. Do that shit. If it's you know, but you don't want to do that shit until you're sixty, like Al said. Um, there's a time and a place in your life when you need to be working hard and appreciate that shit, so you can learn to move on from it. And two. Yeah. Like Gina touched on earlier, I'm sorry. Last thing is, you have to be able to know when you're when you're making these plans and you're talking to your kids, you have to be able to understand that they're individuals, and you're not gonna have these blanket rules, plans, and policies that apply to one, two, three, or all of your kids, because you have to be able to cater to what works best for them. Um, if you start throwing these blanket statements around and saying, "Oh, y'all gonna be out of here," I don't give a damn then you're going to have six different problems you got to deal with if you got six different kids. So um, I'll end with that. But Jay, you kind of saying the same thing that Gina was saying. Like, it's still, you you still teaching your kids, like, you know, the concept of working hard. You know? Right, but I think that you teach the concept of working hard just differently. So instead of be and I, and, and I say this because there's a power in words, and I believe in words. And I don't believe that we have to work hard to get what we want in life. I believe that with dedication, perseverance, and consistency, that's not hard. That's actually not very hard at all. Right. It's, it's very once, hard for a lot you of put people. Your mind, but wait, but what I'm saying is if you teach them that early, if we decide to change our mind around working hard and we change our mind around dedication, perseverance, and consistency, if we show that, if we be that, then no, it's not going to be difficult for them. It will be something that's ingrained in them. It will be something that they know. So while we look at working hard as something that's ingrained in us and that's something that we know, the point of these generational curses is to change our mind about it so they can change their mind about it so that that same mentality doesn't continue because why the fuck does everything for us always have to be so hard it doesn't it actually really doesn't when once once you stick to a plan you write that shit down and you keep it and you work hard at it and throw some action up in that bitch it's actually really not that difficult well no no, you just said you work hard at it you gotta work hard and I think I that did just say I did, did just, just say, say that, that because that's <laughs> what it takes. And I, I, I agree with I agree with that point because I work hard. Hard doesn't mean struggle though, is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Right. I, I was never talking about struggle, right. although there's value in a struggle too. But I would never recommend, because I, I understand fully that it's not necessary for you to struggle in mm-hmm. order to be happy mm-hmm. or for you to struggle in order for you to have all of your needs and your desires met, right? Like, you, it does not have to be that way. Mm-hmm. But I think the bigger problem, too, I think it was JR that said it, it's about this emotional, the emotional attachment that you have placed on the word hard. Mm-hmm. Like, hard for me? to me is not a negative thing and it appears that it's very negative for you Ladine. and so even oh. saying work hard do this hard like you want to back away from that completely mm-hmm. and I'm just saying I don't have a need to back away from it because that's not a negative word that, that ain't a curse word to me I, I think it's that way because it's 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 generationally the word work the words work hard have meant what Ladine's attaching to it. Right. And it, and it's not just that, but I'm very mind I look to be mindful. I'm not I'm not perfect, so I slip up, right? And I've constantly learned um, working to train myself to get certain words out of my vocabulary. So for instance, like the word try. I ain't trying shit. Either I'm doing it or I'm not. When you affirm and when you and when you look in the mirror and you say, I am beautiful, I am for you're not looking in the mirror saying, um, I'm ugly, I'm I'm unworthy. No. So you're using words in a different 
context to support your life. That's all I'm at. That that that's what the fuck I'm talking about here. So we are constantly putting this narrative in these kids' heads, in generation after generation, that we have to work hard, and working hard is attached. To Our kids don't see us. Well, some kids do see kids, you know, people struggle. But they're not seeing, like, the struggle. You know what I'm saying? Because we've kind of um, broken, like, that generational curse. You know, seeing the struggle. So now, because it's hard for me and Thomas now, we're trying to instill that in Carter. He doesn't know, really, like, you got to work hard. <laughs> he thinks everything comes easy. So that's something that we struggle with every day with Carter. He really doesn't know the concept of what work hard is because he see how easy we're getting things done, money coming easy, whatever, whatever, and he's not understanding that concept of what working hard is. Thomas? You got Tom, I was going to say, Thomas, you been real quiet. <laughs> you got anything you want to throw in it? Anything? Hey, oh my nerves! No, I'm I'm just I'm just soaking. I I, I hear what Lay's saying, and and I do. I, I really like what you're saying. You you want to you know omit the you know the work the the hard you know with the with the work, and you want to I guess you want to you want to add or or you want to you want to. You want to put in the the be consistent and be resilient, and and so I I get that and and I, I think that's I think that's cool as well, but 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 I'm I'm looking at the the working hard and I and I don't see it as as a negative, you know I I don't see it as a negative, but that's just my opinion and and you know you definitely awarded the right you know for your opinion, but I I see exactly what you you know what you're saying, but uh. That, that's it. That's it. I'm good. And Ali looked like you were trying to jump in. Well, one, I just want to shout out my brother Don because he would have loved uh, Ladine's comment that try means failure because that was something he mm -hmm. drilled in his little brother's head as little boys. Right? So that was something that I don't know where he got it from, but he would definitely be like, try. Try means failure. That even as recent as today said that shit to me, but <laughs> um, I, I I'm just I'm a believer in teaching kids working hard, not necessarily because it in all instances is going to lead to a successful outcome, but because in many instances that's what's going to be required, and uh, without knowing what's uh, in front of you um, I think it's best to be prepared to work hard and I think in some instances based on our own life experiences we know that hard work is going to be required and in those cases that's where you have to require it and and you know you you have to force to, or really instill it because if you want the success out of the kids um, that's what they have to be trained to do but you know, we, we know that there are instances where depending on how life circumstances work out, people have had amazing lives and not not worked hard or not worked really hard. But I'm a big believer that hard work is a good thing. And um, it, so I, I, I just 
I, I, I don't see it. I, I don't see it as a bad thing because worst case scenario, it builds character, and we definitely need more character. Well, worst case scenario, you can't walk when you're fifty. I've seen that shit. So there's a lot worse. At like that's what I'm saying. Like you can work hard for all your life, and then you can't stand up straight when you're 45. I've seen that shit. Um, yeah, and I guess I wonder what their life would have been like if they didn't work so hard. No, I mean, like, and so I don't, I don't hmm. know the answer to either one of those questions. Right. But um, that's not gonna stop me from, you know. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, 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 yeah, I don't. I don't want anybody to get it twisted that I think hard work is a bad thing. What I'm saying is, there. I don't want people to think that there are never an. There's never an alternative to hard work. Traditional hard work, the way we were taught. I don't want people to think that there's never an alternative. Like you can't succeed unless you work hard. That's a myth. Right. That's the same thing I was. <laughs> that's the same thing I was saying. All I'm saying is. Why can't we change that narrative to dedication, perseverance, and consistency in work, period? Why does the hard got to be there? But I'm, I'm, I'm going right. to shut up about it because I respect all your opinions. And I got to shout out Keisha Cliff now that you said that, Alvin, about Don because Kiki is the one who, um, who, who, who brought the idea of uh, getting rid of the word try right. and to stop saying the word tribe is actually something that um, she was working on and when I talk, spoke to her about it probably I don't know if this was last year or the year prior I was like that is such a beautiful mm-hmm. idea like I gotta work on this I gotta practice this because the word try was so present in my vocabulary in my daily life I said no we're not doing this either we up to something or we not but we're not doing this trying to <laughs> All right. Shout out to one of my favorite people. Shout right. out to my cousin Keisha. No doubt. Yes. And um and I know we talk about, you know, a lot of things we talk about raising kids and um shout out to Keisha as well because a lot of things we talk about like being a parent is not a results driven business. You're gonna put a lot of this, a lot of shit into it and the results may not reflect what you put into it because your kids gonna do whatever the fuck they wanna do at some point. Um so as my sister would say um, it may not, it may not be pretty, but it will always be beautiful. So, um, you know, I'm, you know, so enjoy being the, the, this, this journey called parenthood. So whatever it looks like. And I would, I would, um, I, I think that's the case when they become adults. Mm-hmm. So I do think kids are as a, as a kid, mm. not, you know, not that life can't throw curveballs, but more often than not, kids represent how they were raised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as adults, is what I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I let me just go Thanks. on record. Gina Allen. <laughs> I think Gina Allen out there. I don't know. Lay, why do I see you? Straight yeah, Allen. straight Allen. Yeah, I see her too. I think you mm-hmm. can teach your children consistency and dedication and, and all of that. I also just happen to believe that you teach them hard work too. And if you, and that hard work, like that, or that word or that phrase or whatever, it's about the narrative that you attach to it and you teach your children. And so I'm all for, and I wholeheartedly believe that a a struggle is not always necessary for success. Sometimes it is, but it's definitely not always. And that does not have to be in the form of blood, sweat, and tears. So are we equating like hard work to well the the oh, notion well, hard work to <laughs> hey to to like back breaking labor because you know consistently and resilient that's i i guess that's on the other spectrum of you know hard work because you 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 equate someone that's, that's working hard that it's being you know consistent resilient so uh, that so so it's like to me it goes hand in hand it is mm-hmm. it's one and two the same 
that, that's how I view it. Uh, I, I agree, and that's why I was like, it's all about how you couch it. It's your narrative that you attach with it or whatever. But I also want to go to the trying is failing comment. Like, I completely disagree with that. And while I understand the sentiment behind it, mm -hmm. like, it just really doesn't make a whole lot of sense practically. But more importantly, that's also about uh, a, a negative view to failure. So I was about to say, too, failure can be a good thing. So I want to go say nothing because I love my cousin Don. But yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it, and it, and, and certain just because Don is saying like to me if you just take it for what it is try means failure meaning that you didn't get it done mm -hmm. failure in that sense you mm -hmm. didn't accomplish what you were saying you were going so it it was always in a, a reminder that especially as I'm talking about I'm gonna oh, I'm, I'm gonna try to do that <laughs> nah son you already you know try means failure you ain't gonna do it so it, it, it was really how I took it as a, as a as a kid was more him getting me to speak in a way that be anticipating doing something or commit to doing it, not come at it half ass and say, "All right, I'm gonna try to do that." Yeah, speaking in action. Right, yeah. speak it in action. Uh -huh. That's how I took it. Yeah, like I said, I get it. Mm -hmm. I do. It's not a something that I subscribe to. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. um, I just also wanted to confirm this this idea of um, we talked about wanting kids to be successful um, and I just we talked about you mentioned how we wanted our kids to mm -hmm. um, go away to school and um, a, a data fact I guess came into me where I was reminded that that's a that was really informed by also a best practice at the time I was working with that college access org and it was just for if you if your kids are going to pursue education after high school the the numbers suggest that those who go right after high school tend to show more resilience and are the ones who persist and come back the next semester and then those who come back for consecutive semesters tend to even be more successful at the end and then those who go right after high school go for consecutive semesters and those who put down roots at that campus like get connected with something are the ones that are the most successful so just being a, a retired data geek I just wanted to get that data point in there. Um, I don't think you retired, Boo. I don't. I don't think you retired. I also think those numbers are flawed, but we'll talk about that later. That's real interesting, Jr. But mm. well, we're not even gonna open up that can. Right. I said we'll talk about it later. I, I just yeah. But I do want to ask y'all a question just because it's something that I have seen a lot on uh, social media these days. <clears throat> All right, so everybody's waiting for this STEMI check, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's just waiting, checking their bank accounts every other day online, mm -hmm. like, where my money, where my money? So, you know, this time, I guess it happened last time, too, but you're getting money for the adults, and you're getting money for the children, but this time you're getting money for adult children, too, right? So as long as the child is over 16, 18, whatever it is, and you claim them, then you're getting stimulus money for those children as well. So the question is, it keeps popping up. You know, kids want their money. That's my money. Where my money? When we gonna get my money? Uh, uh, <laughs> and we have parents that's like, yes, it's their money. Give it to them. I don't know what the problem is, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just curious. Where do y'all stand on whether it's... Uh, you know, because for some people, it's also like, even if the children are minor children, right? Some people are using this as an opportunity to...
the child. So I know your babies are, you know, 13 and <coughs> 14 and under, right? Four, is it 14? Mm-hmm. 14, okay. And so if he was 18, if he was 21, like, would it matter? Or are you still like, nah, it's not? I don't know. I think maybe if they were 18, 20, it, I mean, it just depends on the situation. If I was going to, if, if they needed that money for something specific, if it was going to go towards, let's say, a car for them, if it was going to go towards, you know, something that was going to benefit them, yeah, but to put in your bank account for you to splurge on yourself because you think you get this money, no, that's not what it is because they their financial future. So, no, you're still not getting this money. Maybe we could decide that it might be well, to put something, right. but you're not getting this. I'm sorry. That conversation, conversation went a little bit like this. Hell no. <laughs> what did you say? Hell no. Hold up. I, I didn't hear you, Jay. What did you, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> it was one question and the answer was, hell no. You're not getting no stimulus check. Like, what are you stimulating? Right, yeah, right. Stimulate their annoyance, to stimulate they, they my my Amazon account. Like, no, They're like okay. really, right? Man, there's no way. What say you? Um, I well, first of all, no, my kids, they don't even have to think about it because they be in my pockets anyway. Okay, exactly. <laughs> I'm buying them stuff anyway with the money, so. It doesn't matter. Now, I do feel a little differently if they're 18, but I'm going to do it like how I think I know my parents would would have done. Is If it's coming to my bank account, oh, I'm taking $400 <laughs> on top. But if, it's eight, if, if they're 18 and up, I'm, I might give them their 1000 <laughs> because they're going to end up, you know, they can use it however, but I'm taking $400 off the top. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, get, no get, damn a, get a cut, right? That was tell it. College or yeah, I would yeah. want my money if I was eighteen. Yeah, now. college. See, that's what you said. You said my money. Eighteen, like 18. right? If, if I was eighteen, I would want my money. If they're in college, I might ration it out, you know, but. You know, not not for me to put a rack on them and then I look up. Well, you got four new pairs. <clears throat> right. You know, so uh, yeah. and right, so I'm a, I'm a uh, ration. I'm a ration. Like the dad gonna work study check. You know, so, <laughs> right. so I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna drop. I'm not gonna drop the rack right on them. Right, and when and the day that Ladanian asked that question, I came home and I ordered DoorDash. I ordered lunch for them. The reason I knew this was not a good idea for me to give them fourteen hundred dollars was when I asked them, "Okay, I give, I let you make a decision. Either you pay for lunch today, or you you, know, you trade me your stimulus check." Oh no 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 no! I'm good. I want lunch. That's how I knew they was too fucking stupid for fourteen hundred dollars. <laughs> so at that point, I was like, "It ain't even a question. These niggas can't see past the lunch." So nah. <laughs> Like I said, I keep seeing these conversations on uh, social media, and it really didn't occur to me really too much. Um, but my daughter, while she hasn't come out and asked for any money or the money or whatever, like she keep inquiring about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you're saying. I'm just, I, I'm just like, hmm. Tell her to ask her daddy. Nah, right. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Right. Right. But what she? Right. Yeah. Here's the problem. Here's the rub. The rub is it ain't your money. Right. <laughs> it ain't. So, like this idea that we're my money. See, that's where you're wrong. Right. I'm correct you. Stop mm-hmm. right there. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Pump the right. brakes. Because let's be let's be specific. Mm-hmm. You're saying the word my. You wrong. It ain't yours. It's mine. And so I would actually try to use it as a teachable moment. Right? Mm-hmm. Be like, see, so remember when I was talking to you about choices? <laughs> and mm-hmm. at 18, you could choose to go to school. <laughs> and <they support> you, <laughs> right. Or you could choose to be independent. 
You chose the role of education. That's true. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but in the future, hopefully the near future, you will be independent and it will come to you. At this time, it ain't your money. All right. Un- until then. Until then. Until then. She wants to know, should she file her taxes? And I'm like, why, what are you talking about? Right. Well, you know, how, how, how I'm going to get the stimulus. Maybe. Uh, mm. uh, Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Next so. year, bro. Not this year. Next year. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah, but. <laughs> they, next, they. Next, next. Right. And it goes. We got a better chance of getting a, uh, uh, some money out of my pocket. But not even stepping to me talking about what you're Right. Exactly. Right. Right. Like, just step to me like, I know your daddy got broke off. You know what? Let me come and ask you. Right. Mm-hmm. You know my pockets is heavy. I might say, you know what? Nah, yeah, nah. I respect that. I do. Let me see what I could do for you. Right. You want me to want some side out of pay shit? Like, yo, where my money at? Where my money? I'm about to spend it. That's where your money at. Where my money? Like, like I said, I want my money. She already you know. See, that's why I'm like, Peter, you you talking about it wrong? You still calling it my money? All right. <laughs> my money. <laughs> All right. 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 You know, the, if you did, it's still like, it ain't enough. It ain't enough because see, I I contributed one billion francs. <laughs> right. The same way you the same way you don't take credit for your head being on this insurance is the same way you don't take credit for your head being on this stimulus. It ain't yours, boo. I take care of it. The same way I take care of this insurance, I'm gonna take care of this stimulus too. Right. Yeah, your name on that plan. You don't take responsibility for that. Right, right. Car insurance. Yeah, right. Hey. Your name all over that shit. Ain't no mind that. Come on, son. We're not even talking about this. Right. Right. I don't even know why we're having this conversation. But that's why I just come home. Right. They might be hearing this independent thing is all, yeah. it's all bad. You got to right. get all these bills. Every now and then, right. there's a benefit to it. Uh, there is. I'm right. But I I just come home from work every day. I be like, hello, 1400s. And just talk, just taunt them with it. <laughs> hello, <laughs> little 1400s. I, I, I think I'm going to send her a text. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. How are my 1400s doing today? Y'all my day one 1400s. I'm just, yeah. just, I just taunt them with it all day. Yours, it ain't fucking yours, and that's it. Right, and then and then he go lay lay in the back. I'm like, I might give y'all a hundred, Daddy. Can we have a hundred? That's your mama's bank account. I don't claim you on taxes. My stimulus stand with me, buddy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they go do something. They gonna get it anyway, in, in some form or another. Just Cheese on that burger. But I'm just right. saying, I'm that type of brother. I'm not even admitting I got this thing. <laughs> right. Prove it. Know. I want proof. Show me I got it. But daddy, but daddy what? He wasn't talking to me. Right. And, well, in real talk, we haven't gotten it. So, right. it whoever money you want to right now is still Uncle Sam's. Okay. Us, because mm. it ain't in our account. Right. Uh, yeah, it's just, just very interesting. It's just the fact that our two children are very different. And so while she hasn't come out, like, she's clearly got her <laughs> eye on it. My son ain't mentioned it at all. No, he be plotting. He, no, he, he not even. Yeah, he know better. He, but he's that kid, like, he ain't going to ask. Like, he just never, he just never asks for anything. He just, he just doesn't. Um, but he's also that kid that ain't, like, Cause if it was me, I'd have filed already. <laughs> right. 
like for myself for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can slip that in there right. with my own stimulus. Mm -hmm. Because for people who have applied for 20, they are using their 20 mm -hmm. taxes to do that. All right. right. And so, but you know, he ain't. I don't know, he ain't up on the game enough. He don't care enough about it. I don't know which it is, but I'd have been up there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so y'all think it's yours? Watch this. This mm, is my account. Right. For real. Going to my account. But, mm. you know, whatever. Next nice. year, if there's a stimulus, he'll be in there. <laughs> right. Sure. Get it. Get it with, 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 with his name on the check. All okay. up in it. All up in there. All right, y'all. I, I think we have come to the end of a um, great topic, great conversation. Uh, hopefully, y'all will share a little bit of your the money with your children. I don't know, take them out to dinner or not, whatever. Or, or just go ahead and kick them out and give them their <laughs> stimulus. <laughs> <laughs> How you like that plan? <laughs> That's a plan for you. That's a plan for you. I hope you don't plan to spit it in one place. told that greatness is exceptional when it should be expected you choose every day to live your life intentionally without apology for how bright your light may shine so go be great go be brilliant go be you go defy life the defy life movement is one that speaks to each of us in its own way defy life gear speaks to us all by reminding us that one size does not fit all Visit the firelifegear.com to get fitted for greatness.